Get your pills ready and settle in your microwave chairs, everyone, because we have Maniac, Ending Explained. Now, for those of you who haven't checked out my individual episode breakdowns, I'll put a link in the description below. I only did the first few episodes because I underestimated what a beast of a show this would be to break down individually, so I'm summing it all up here in this video. So without further ado, here's Maniac, Ending Explained and Questions Answered. If you made it this far and don't want spoilers for the entire series, turn back now and remember you signed an NDA. I truly love this show. It was quirky, well-made, acted, and chock-full of little mysteries and homages. Nods to the Coen brothers, Kubrick, The Matrix, and of course director Kerry Fukunaga's own True Detective. Gotta give props to Twitter user Ben Travers for spotting the big hug mug that made its way into the show. But it was the message, the thing this show is really trying to say, that really brought the whole story together. So let's interpret the ending and answer some of the questions you might still be wondering. In episode 10, Owen and Annie, patients number 1 and 9, have made it through ULP testing, pills A, B, and C, a rogue supercomputer meltdown, and their own worst fears and traumas. Relatively unscathed. Annie has come to terms with her sister Ellie's death and has finally been able to let go of her guilt. Owen has faced the reality of, well, his reality. What's real versus what he's just seeing in his mind. But more importantly, Owen begins identifying his issues and addressing them. For example, his outbursts. The ones that affect the people he loves, like with Olivia seen many times in Owen's ULP reflections. Here in the self-help book, here at the full moon seance, and here as the waitress in Owen's mob reflection. More self-aware, Owen breaks ties with Annie after the ULP, sends an apology letter to Olivia, and builds up the courage to testify truthfully against his brother Jed. The Milgrams then send him to a psychiatric institution. Annie, now at peace with her sister's death, visits Hank to reconnect, only to discover Dad's actually come out of the A-void. No longer burdened by guilt, she freely explains her story and what happened at Neberdeen Pharmaceutical and Biotech to Papa Hank also played by Hank Azaria. Here, Annie's dad touches on the whole point of the series. Listen closely. Owen listened to all of my stories, but in the reflections, I kept giving him all these reasons not to trust me, but he just kept trying to help me. He acted like a friend. In therapy, Owen explains why he's disconnected from Annie. He claims that if he didn't, one of two things would happen. Option A, he eventually finds out she never existed. Option B, she's real, which is worse. Eventually, Owen always does something wrong, an outburst like with Olivia, or something drastic like jumping from a building. And when that happens, Annie will look at him differently, run away and change her number. It's easier if she's not real. But the title of this episode is Option C. Annie sees Owen in a newspaper headline and visits him. She listens to his story. She acts like a friend. And for the first time, Owen is freed from his trauma, just as he did for Annie. The two escape and race off to Salt Lake City. The end. So what does this ending mean? I've seen posts debating whether or not Annie and Owen are still in a simulation, and this was not reality. But I don't believe that to be true. Here's my take. Annie and Owen are real. Whatever world this is, regardless if there are alternate realities, this is real. These two people start with deep, unresolved emotional trauma. For Annie, it was the death of her sister. For Owen, it was his outburst with Olivia and his relationship with his family. And nothing could resolve these traumas, not even a robotic supercomputer that delved into the inner workings of their minds. It was only through connecting with each other, Owen and Annie, one and nine, that they finally came to accept their reality, accept themselves, and move forward. This is the premise of Maniac, the healing power of connection, our traumas, our defense mechanisms, our blind spots. The only true way to disarm them, to see again, is through connection. This mysterious, intangible thing we feel only through others. It wasn't miracle science or pop therapy that ultimately helped these two. It was their connection to each other. As the credits roll, we get one more look at Annie and Owen racing off into the sunset. And as they do, they pass by Dr. Mantleray and Azumi heading off into their own happy ending. Dr. Mantleray muses over a theory he's just developed, the same theory we hear at the beginning of the series. Let's listen to it because it's very important. Maybe it was chance. Maybe it was inevitable. This one changed amoeba becomes the ancestor of every living plant on Earth, which in turn floods the planet with oxygen. paving the way for every other form of life we know. 
leading to more souls, more connections, and therefore more new worlds branching outward from the first. These forces of nature, when they converge, be they astronomical collisions, biological unions, demonstrate the infinite potential of our connections. This truth also extends to the human heart. Maniac leads with this message and ends with it too, the infinite potential of our connections. The world painted in Maniac is one of tremendous loneliness, a world where you can pay people to act like friends, where you can hide away in an avoid, and pay for products by listening to others spew ads. This is a world barren of connection, and the people who inhabit it are weighed down by its absence. But by the end, Annie and Owen, Mantle Ray and Azumi are transformed by their connections. Now there are some theories suggesting Annie and Owen are still in the simulation, that they are in fact McMurphyed, a term the show uses to describe you ULP testers who've been collected by Gertie to permanently live in these reflections with her. In the real world, they are essentially brain dead. Remember these twins? They pop up many times throughout the show. Here is Gertie's entourage in the seance, here alongside Lady Nora in the elf fantasy, again with Queen Gertie, and also at Snorri's party for Ernie the Alien. Easter egg, Ernie the Alien is the name of Jed's gerbil. Remember early on in the series, Owen described saving a wounded hawk that went on to eat Jed's gerbil. Snorri, like Owen, accidentally kills Ernie. The evidence for this McMurphy theory is as follows. First, check out the references to the events from the ULP Reflections here in the sign-up sheet at the psychiatric facility. Notice Wendy Lemuria, aka Wendy the Lemur. Three names above it is Yurik. Remember Yurik, aka Greg F.U.N. Naslin from the Elf Reflection. Second, Dr. Mantle Rays and Azumi's cars. These are the same cars from Owen and Annie's Reflections. And look at Mantle Rays' license plate, 01991A. O for Owen, the numbers 1 and 9, which were Owen and Annie's numbers, and then A for Annie. Finally, the Poop Bot, Owen's dead hawk, and Groucho, the lost dog, following Annie and Owen on their drive to Salt Lake City. How could these things appear in reality, things so connected to their previous reflections. Could it be they are actually still in a simulation? No. Well, there is no definitive answer, and the beauty of this show is that it's open to interpretation, similar to the leave it up to the audience ending of Inception. But I believe these are merely artistic strokes from the show's creator, the hawk, bot, and dog being symbolic of Owen and Annie's transformation through the story. The cars, I believe, are Azumi's doing. In episode 9, we learned Azumi programmed Gertie after Greta Mantle Ray's mind. Who's to say, during all the additions and reprogramming, bits of Azumi's life didn't go in as well? And if this is all a simulation, how did Dr. Mantle Ray and Azumi pass by Owen and Annie on the road? As I see it, this interpretation deflates the premise of the show, the power of human connection, the power of friendship. All seems pretty irrelevant and horribly morose if the idea is they've been McMurphyed. But be it real life or not, it shouldn't matter. We can take whatever interpretation we wish. It doesn't change the fact that Owen and Annie's major transformation was all due to the connection they made with each other. This is the ending of Maniac. Now I'd like to address some of the questions I've seen online and that people still have, starting with, who was Grimson, aka Secret Agent Jed? Was he just in Owen's mind? Yes, but more as an imaginary friend. He was the brother Owen always wanted. It was impossible for Owen to connect with his family, so he invented a brother he could actually relate with. You could say he was a part of Owen's mind, trying to help him get past his defense mechanisms, his blind spots, and confront his trauma. Thus his importance in Episode 9 and the Rubik's Cube. Who is McMurphy? McMurphy, in terms of the narrative, could possibly be Gertie's original victim, but most likely it's a reference to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Why does Owen hate Balderdash so much? According to director Kerry Fukunaga, it's because the game is all lies, similar to his family being full of lies and them pushing Owen to lie on the stand for Jed. What's with the dated technology in the alternate New York? What year is it? This one was answered by creator Patrick Somerville. To me, it's not our timeline, Somerville says. It's our zeitgeist of 2018, and it's a different history of technology. It's a different kind of version of our reality. So 2018 zeitgeist, but a world where the microchip was never invented. Maybe something like that. Somerville explains he and Fukunaga were looking for the analog version of trends that would be familiar to today's audiences. Take the ad buddies, for example, which are essentially the physical manifestations of Instagram-sponsored content or web ads. This was all an attempt to throw viewers off their axis. 
Why all the references to mirrors, the moon, and rainbows? First, the mirrors. The mysterious last chapter of Don Quixote is hidden behind a mirror in episode 5. Elf Annie peers into a mirror and becomes lucid. These dreamlike scenarios they enter are called reflections. Simply put, one of the themes of this show is self-acceptance. That's why mirrors, and looking into oneself, play a big role. The moon is also seen many times. Owen gazes up at it after leaving Olivia. He wears a worn moon football jersey in the lemur kidnapping reflection. Also the invisible moon on their journey to the lake of the clouds. In astrology, the sun dictates your zodiac personality, while your moon sign represents your emotions and your inner mood. Side note, the night of the white moon and the night of reflections are characters in Don Quixote. The rainbows are also symbolic representing promise or peace. So that's it for my take on the ending of Maniac. I thoroughly enjoyed this miniseries, and I hope you did too. I'd love to hear if you have any unanswered questions in the comment section, and of course, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe.